guests to talk about this. I want to go first to Dr. Robin Russell Jones, who's a, a medical doctor, actually a dermatologist, but a long, a long um, campaigner on these issues. Um, he runs an educational charity called Help Rescue the Planet, and has just written a book on how humanity is damaging the environment called the Gilgamesh Gene. So, Robin, as this this was never going to go far enough for you, whatever they said. But how far short is it, as far as you're concerned? Well, the draft plan was pretty widely criticised, not just by me, but by the British Medical Journal uh, and by Sadiq Khan, Mayor of London. Uh, the plan that's been published uh, doesn't seem to be very different from the draft plan. They've basically, ab the government's basically abdicated responsibility for tackling air pollution. They, what they've done is they've devolved all the responsibility to local councils, but then they've tied their hands by uh, maintaining a veto over the ability of councils to charge diesel and other highly polluting vehicles from going into city centres. So they've made the councils bear the responsibility, but they haven't given them the means to actually do anything about it. So you, you, you would favour some kind of scheme where a council in any, in any particular town or city could say, we're just going to you know, charge you extra, we're going to penalise you for driving diesel cars into the town, higher parking charges, the congestion type charging whatever that well that's what they do in london so why shouldn't they do it in other countries in other uh places that that fail eu air quality standards i mean the principle is exactly the same but the argument is that i mean you have somebody who's struggling to make a living driving a diesel van diesel car whatever is now going to get penalized for I mean, that's not their fault bought the diesel car in good faith are they going to pay a heavy price because of it i mean you can only do what's politically sort of possible can't you yeah, but if you took that attitude, you'd never pass any legislation to improve public health. I mean, we took lead out of petrol uh, 30 years ago, and, and there was major opposition to that from the car manufacturers and the lead industry. But once it happened, no one complained. It just happened, and everybody just got on with it. I mean, uh, the same thing applies to getting rid of diesel pollution. I mean, it, it, there, there is a cost, but the cost of doing nothing is far higher because air pollution is linked to 40,000 deaths a year in the UK. As far as I know, there's not a lot in there about trains and, and shipping freight and so on, and, and, and lorries. Well, what's got to happen with that in terms of diesel? Well, the government's document entirely sort of focuses on levels of nitrogen dioxide, because that is the court case that was brought by the environment advocacy group client earth so they are trying to solve the no2 problem but of course no2 is not the main problem the bigger killer is actually particulates um, and uh, what we, what we really need is a proper clean air strategy that deals with all pollutants and all sources of pollution and that is far far greater than what the government is proposing so particulates come from where well, particulates come from a variety of sources, but in urban areas, the, the uh, major contributor is, again, diesel vehicles. Are you convinced that electricity is the answer? Because that's not necessarily true. You've said in the past that, I don't know, hydrogen power and so on, which are all in the realms of sort of fantasy at the moment. But are you, are you confident you could generate enough electricity cleanly well, it's not, to it's make not it not fantasy. You can, you can buy a hydrogen field lorry in this country if you want at the moment. And I know someone who's done it. But um, it is it is you know, vestigial at the moment, that is true. Electric vehicles are great because they will solve local, local pollution problems. I mean, if you're running your fleet on, uh, on electric vehicles, they don't produce pollutants. But of course, it depends how you power the battery. If you're using fossil fuels in a power station to power the battery of electric vehicles, then you are not helping the wider environmental issue of climate change. In fact, you may be making it worse because you know, it is more efficient actually to put a fossil fuel in an engine than, than to generate power from a power station and then transmit the energy to a battery. Um, but that is an argument, not that is an argument to make sure that the power for the battery in an electric vehicle comes from renewables and other low carbon sources. I mean, any strategy to introduce electric vehicles has to be combined with a program to get rid of fossil fuels uh, as a means of generating power. And that, of course, all fits in with the Paris Climate Agreement. So it, it's, not, it's not a new idea, this. It's just the government is very reluctant to, to implement this and has put it off until 2040.
What about the aircraft coming over us now at Westminster on their way to Heathrow, coming in every 56 seconds or whatever it is? Have, what's their contribution to the part well, to the point of view of climate change? Climate, yeah, what climate change? Yeah, climate just pollution. Well, I mean, air travel as a produces about two percent of CO2 worldwide, but it also has other effects such as contrails. So overall, it contributes about five to six percent of global warming. Um, it does have an impact on local pollution, but in fact the main problem at Heathrow is not so much the aeroplanes as the local congestion from the traffic trying to get there. Robert Llewellyn, the Red Dwarf actor.